Good evening students, welcome back with another video. So today I'm going to be explaining the math AMS sheet. So let's get started with the first question. Negative four plus negative one. Don't really mind these parentheses because they're just like to separate the negative from the positive sign. So if if we have two numbers that have the same sign, negative and negative, or positive and positive, we just add. So 4 plus 1 equals 5, and we take the, the sign of the, the number that has a greater absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Uh, which one is a greater number? Negative uh, 4. Not negative 4, 4 is the greater number, the absolute value. So we take its sign, so it becomes negative 5. Negative 7 plus 34. So in this case, we have different signs. If we have different signs, we should subtract. So like here it's ne negative, and here it's positive. So negative and positive, we subtract. 34 minus 7 equals... 27. Then, as I said, we take the sign of the greater absolute value. So, 34 has a greater absolute value. So, it's just positive 27. So, I'll just tell you the rule, like, orally. So, if you have two numbers with the same sign, you add, as in this question, question number one. Negative and negative, you add. If you have two numbers, different signs, like this you subtract and then take the in both cases you take the sign of the greater absolute value next question 7 plus negative 18 as i said this parenthesis is only to uh, only to separate the positive and negative they have different signs so we subtract 18 minus 7 it's 11 and which one has a high a greater absolute value it's the negative, it's the 18, so negative 18, it's the negative 18 with the absolute value of 18, and 7, absolute value 7, so negative 18 has a larger absolute value, so we take its sign, 11, negative 11, 0 plus negative 3. In this question, we could solve it in three ways. First of all, the number line, we could just draw a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3. And go three steps back. Wait, I'll make it clearer. Draw a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Here we have 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Here is it. Here. So it's on negative 3. The second one is we use the identity axiom of addition. Any number added to 0 is the number itself, which is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 0, negative 3. <coughs> Third way is using, using the rule. So 0 does not even have a, have a sign. And negative 3 it has a negative sign. So we just subtract. We go three places before 0. It's negative 3. Question number 5. The sum of... A positive number x and a negative number x. Here, basically, they're asking for, like, one will the answer be would one will the answer be positive and one will it be negative and one will it be zero. So it would be positive if the absolute value of x is greater than the absolute value of y. And negative. Absolute value of y, no, absolute value of, absolute value of x is smaller than absolute value of y. Zero, if absolute value of x equals the absolute value of y. So in these cases, like, in this question, like, is, means that the answer, the answer of the, like the, the sum of the question would be positive 
if if uh, x the absolute value of x look here in the question they said x is a positive number and y is a negative number so for example if we had x 7 and y is 5 negative 5 7 plus negative 5 so if the absolute value of x is larger than the absolute value of y then the answer would be equal to a positive number which is 2 in the second one negative if absolute value of x is smaller than y absolute value of y so in this case they mean if it was 4 and the absolute value of y was negative 6 so the absolute value of negative 6 is equal to 6 the absolute value of 4 is equal to 4 so the 6 has a larger absolute value so we take its sign that's what like what do you mean by the question so it's equal to negative 2 0 if here we have for example oh not negative here x is positive 3 negative 3 plus like when you have the absolute value of 3 it's 3 absolute value of negative 3 it's 3 so 3 like if you have look 3 plus negative 3 3 plus negative 3 here we could use like the additive in uh, axiom of additive inverses and we could use the number line and the rule but look if we use the rule 3 plus negative 3 they have one has positive one has negative so we subtract 3 minus 3 it's equal to 0 so no sign if x is equal to y x is positive y is negative we'll get 0 as an answer Question number 6, 2a plus 3b, for a equals to negative 2 and b equals to negative 4, 2a in 2 into negative 2 plus 3 into negative 4. So, when we have into, it means like we should multiply, or when we have like the number stick to the parentheses that means we should multiply it so 2 times 2 4 we take the negative because because there is a rule here like this positive and negative equals to negative negative and negative equals to positive and, and uh, uh, positive and positive equals to positive so if we have two signs you follow this rule so it's a positive 2 and a negative 2 positive and negative they equal to negative so it's a negative 4 plus 3 times negative 4 so it's gonna be 3 times 4 12 and it's gonna be a negative sign so we're gonna we're gonna be it's gonna be equal it will equal to negative 16 write the following expression as a sum do not simplify so you just write it as sum negative five. So when, whenever we have a negative sign between two numbers, we need to squeeze a small addition. Always, always. We never leave a negative sign in a like when we want to subtract like when you want to subtract two numbers, you never leave a negative sign. Just squeeze you need to squeeze between every sign and the number. So 5 and minus 7 between every sign and a number we have an addition so he I don't mean addition here beside the 7 no I mean like if we have 5 in front of it there's a negative minus not a negative minus it would be addition squeezed like in side so beside it so it will be equal to 5 plus negative 7 negative 5 plus negative 7 that is it as a sum 5 minus 20 24 so 5 minus 24, squeeze an addition, 5 plus negative 24, equals to subtract negative 19. Why? Because the 24 has more like, has more, like, it's, like think of it as like points. So if we have negative 24 points on our card, and then we added 5 points to our card. You subtract 
and then take the sign of the greater greater number so like yeah when you have 24 negative 24 24 on your card and you inserted five point five points like the answer would still be negative because you did not finish the negative 24 b 13 minus 27 as we said we squeeze a little addition 13 plus negative 27 equals different signs we subtract 14 the ne negative 27 has a ha larger absolute value so we take its sign question number nine a four minus negative five so we have four minus negative five we squeeze an addition here into here negative and negative gives us a positive sign positive five wait positive should not be written here Posi positive five is gonna become four plus five equals nine twenty minus negative twelve so as I said you just Squeeze an addition in here. 20 plus negative and negative. So it's a positive 12. 20 plus 12, 32. 10a, negative 13 minus 7. We squeeze an addition. Oh no, 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 sorry, sorry. We already solved it. Question number 11. Negative 6 minus negative 19 we squeeze an addition then negative 6 plus negative and negative positive 19 different signs we subtract 19 minus 6 13 uh, sign of greater absolute value so just 13 because 19 is greater question number 12 0 minus 15 we squeeze an addition 0 plus negative 15 equals so we go back 15 places behind left to 0 we'll get negative 15 or you simply use the number line now I can just start drawing 0 is called the identity element for addition x plus 0 is equal to 0 plus x, which gives us x. Why? Because the identity axiom states that. So any number added to 0 gives the number to number itself, even if it was a variable. So like we're just following the identity axiom of addition, x. The additive inverse of a real number, m, is called the opposite of m. Don't forget. Don't mix up in the exam. Additive inverse is the same as opposite. Give reason 3. Reason 3 should be 24 plus 20 minus 24. So the changes here are swaps, so it's commutative in here. Because they changed the places inside the brackets. 20 plus 24 minus 24, this is associative, associative, and then 24 minus 24, that's the uh, axiom, axiom of additive inverses, why, look, when we have 24, Minus 24. I told you... Oh, 24. I told you guys you need to squeeze an addition into here. So it will become 24 plus negative 24. But they, like, kind of simplified it. That's why it's 24 minus 24. Question number 16. What is the axiom of... Multi what is the axiom of multiplicative inverses of non-zero real numbers? So if we have 3... The, the 
multiplicative inverse would be 1 over 3. So the multiplicative inverse means reciprocal. And the reciprocal like 3, the reciprocal of it like if we have 3, it's equal to 3 over 1. The reciprocal, reciprocal or multiplicative inverse is 1 over 3. We have 2 over 1, it will become 1 over 2. 3 over 5, 5 over 3. That's the multiplicative inverse. So, what is the axiom of multiplicative, multiplicative inverses of non-zero real numbers? Give an example using numeric values. Give an example, 3 times 1 over 3 equals 1. That's the example. Does 0 have multiplicative inverse? No, because 0, okay, it's 0 over 1, but it's like we cannot write 1 over 0. It's not defined. The division, it's not defined, it's undefined. Division by zero is not allowed. Is not allowed. Or, is not, you could say it's not allowed, or you could just say undefined. Is it true that absolute value of negative P is equal to negative absolute value of P? No. Because when we have the absolute value of negative p, it doesn't matter, it, ju it would just be positive. For example, I'll just write p, if it's, if, it, if negative p inside the brackets was a positive number, then we just write p. If it was 0, it would be 0. If it was, if it was uh, a negative number, well, then we write a negative p. That means the number is negative, so p is negative, for example, negative 2. And negative and negative will make it a positive number. So that's the definition of p. But it does not equal negative absolute value of negative p to negative absolute value of p, because the absolute value of negative p is always positive. But if we set the negative of the absolute value of p, the absolute value of p would be positive, but with the negative sign, it would be become negative. That's why it's not the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.